Matt Rule flipped his five-star quarterback, Dylan Rayola, right? Now what? Do you ease him in or throw him to the Wolves? Huskers spring football is right around the corner, and I may have some answers for you. Lockdown Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate it. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown and get started. All right, Nebraska's red-white spring game. It's coming up. I want to talk about it. Um, Ohio sports gambling. Be on standby if you're in Ohio. We'll tell you about that, plus well, some hoops news. And UCLA got themselves an offensive coordinator. Did you see who it was? We'll have it all in our Big Ten Top Ten as well. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All righty. So five-star quarterback Dylan Rayola might be exactly what the Nebraska Cornhuskers need to take the next step forward into Big Ten and get into a bowl game. And he very well may be the starter right out of the box for the Huskers. Maybe. Look, in my opinion, let the kid play. See what he can do. Um, I almost think there aren't any really better options for Nebraska right now. Now, the problem is he turns 19 in May, just 19. And look, it's a big ask for any true freshman to come in and start and start a quarterback on day one at any particular power five school. It's, it is hard to do, but I'm just kind of looking at things here. Let's talk about it. Um, there was a lot of excitement in Husker land when they landed this kid. And uh, he was getting ready to go to the mighty Georgia Bulldogs. But let's give credit to Matt Rule and his staff for staying after this kid, even after he announced he was going elsewhere. It seemed like every time he made a decision, and he made a few, he changed his mind a few times. You know, Nebraska was always the bridesmaid. They weren't the one. Um, certainly, uh, Rayola has a family history at the school, and they were always in the mix. But now... Uh, whatever uh, Rule was doing, it seemed to work. And, you know, I think Rule had a pretty good football team last year. Honestly, I do at Nebraska for his first year. The problem was he didn't have a true number one quarterback. Jeff Sims transferred to Lincoln from Georgia Tech. He was named a starter. Well, he was a gifted athlete, seemed like a nice kid, but he was a turnover machine with one touchdown and six interceptions in his games uh, that he did play over the season. And he fumbled a lot. And he was injured early on. Uh, Heinrich Harbour jumped in, showed some flashes, some good speed, running the ball. But he turned the ball over as well, threw seven touchdowns and seven interceptions. And then Chubba Purdy jumped in. And at first we were like, hey, wait a minute. This should have been the guy all along. And then he wasn't. And we were excited that he was Brock Purdy's brother. But in the end, uh, he just couldn't get things together at quarterbacks. So uh, it was a tough deal all season long. Now, if you watched Nebraska football last year, and many of you, I know you Husker fans did, but others did too. I did. I watched a lot. Um, you know that Matt Rule brought in an old school Nebraska type offense. It was option football like the olden days where the quarterback was the first option on the option run. I think it was a bit outdated. And in my opinion, it's an offense. It's a little too risky for quarterbacks today. They're prone to take hits and are prone to get hurt. And, um, you know, maybe that's not the style moving forward. As you bring Rayola in, uh, he is not an option run first quarterback. He's a passer. He's every bit of a passer. Now, that means it might take time for the entire offense and the coaching staff to adopt uh, a different style here. That's not going to happen overnight, but uh, I think they're going to have to throw a lot more and run a lot less, at least uh, at the quarterback position. 
which leads me to my next point. How patient will Nebraska fans be with this entire process? Husker fans are dying for an exceptional football team, right? They're dying to get to a bowl game. They're dying to matter again in football. And if Rayola plays a lot early on, he's going to make some mistakes. It's going to cost him some games. It's part of the learning curve. But, you know, perhaps he should just get on the field and get his mistakes out of the way. Let's get moving. It's Matt Rule's second year. Let's get going, right, Husker fans? Again, I'll go to my prior point. The rare occasion when a true freshman could just walk into a Power 5 starting lineup at quarterback on day one. But. You know, again, I don't see a lot of different uh, choices at this point at Nebraska. Harburg's still on the roster. Everybody else has left. Um, I'll go back to another point that I started to make earlier. Uh, Nebraska fan, you know, being that they're dying for a winner there in Lincoln, um, it's, it is the reason Matt Rule is there. It is the reason that he took over for Scott Frost. Quick history lesson for others that might not be Husker fans like some of you. The storyline with Frost. It was all about the one score losses, right? Year after year. Hey, we're competitive. We're in the mix. Two or three plays here and we're winning instead of losing. We're this close. But the wins, they didn't have the wins to show for it. And by the way, what happened in the last four games for Nebraska last year in 2023 under Matt Rule? Three-point loss at Michigan State. Three-point loss against Maryland. Overtime loss at Wisconsin and a three-point loss to Iowa kind of more the same. It's been December 2016 since Nebraska was in a bowl game, lost to Tennessee in the Music City Bowl, 38-24. to Now, whether Matt Rule decides to baptize Rail under fire, throw him to the Wolves, throw him into the starting lineup, or kind of ease him in just a little bit, it remains to be seen. You know, I it's, it's a tough deal. I don't know if there's a wrong answer here. Um, it's a lot to ask of a young 19 year old, but at some point, and he's talented, he's a five-star kid. Maybe he can walk right in there and let it rip. I don't know. We'll find out a lot during practice, spring ball, summer ball, getting into the fall. He'll get a lot of reps. He'll get a lot of looks. He'll make a lot of mistakes and Husker fans going to have to kind of deal with that and be patient about that. So whatever Matt rule decides remains to be seen, but that's what spring ball and summer football is for. They can get a quick assessment for who they have and and where they are as a team. And the younger players, they kind of get a leg up on into the, the summer flow of how things go when camp breaks in the summertime. So they get, get the uh, hit the ground running. So looking ahead, and that's what we do here on Lockdown Big Ten, you know, Nebraska has a pretty interesting schedule. I wonder how they would have done with this schedule last year, but can't go back in time. We got four home games to start the season with UTEP coming to Lincoln for the opener. And that'll be followed by, it's going to seem like the Super Bowl. Coach Prime, Dion, Colorado coming to Lincoln this year. Last year was at Colorado. This year it's coming like it, it's going to be insane. We'll be talking about it here, no doubt about it, on Lockdown Big Ten. Um, so Nebraska's first... Uh, First four Big Ten games, by the way, are Illinois at Purdue, Rutgers, and then a bye week, and then at Indiana. They could win some football games there. That, that, there's some winnable games in there. The back half gets a little tough. And again, the way they finished last year with those last four games when they were trying to get uh, one more win to be bowl eligible, couldn't do it. Uh, back half is tough again this year. Ohio State. UCLA, which I don't know what they're going to be. By the way, we got news on UCLA coming up in a moment if you missed it over the weekend. Then there's another bye week to get ready for the big trip across the country or halfway across the country, I should say, for USC. And then uh, games against Wisconsin and closing out against Iowa. Yeah, there's some, if they can get quarterback right, some winnable games. I, I would like to think Nebraska could win six games and get themselves bowl eligible. So, what do you think? It all gets started with uh, the red-white game in a few weeks, April 27th. Mark your calendar. That's their date. They'll have their 15 scheduled practices coming up here and then uh, ease into that game. So that's, uh, that's a few weeks away, but 
We're getting there. We're previewing everybody. Spring football for everybody right here on Lockdown Big Ten, and I wanted to talk about Nebraska today. All right, we'll get your comments as well. You can hit us up on X, Twitter, at uh, Talk Big Ten number 10, comments on YouTube. And don't forget our website, TalkBigTenNumber10.com, where you can also go to get all of our previous podcasts, all the Nebraska Husker podcast, anything we talk about the Huskers, it's underneath. You can, really easy to find. You get yourself some swag for Big Ten uh, shirts, hats, pennants, the whole deal. Ticket information, it's all right there at the website, Talk Big Ten number 10. Dot com. So feel free to peruse that as well and uh, get yourself some great stuff. All right. Um, UCLA has a new offensive coordinator right from the NFL. Tell you about that. What happened to Michigan State basketball over the weekend? I was hyping them up, and now they've lost a couple games. And Caitlin Clark's got her own logo. Let's talk about shooting from the logo. Now she has her own logo. All that is coming up right here on Lockdown Big Ten. You know, you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 of bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 if your bet wins. So you can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams that have quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. By the way, we've got some news about props later on, but. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Um, tonight, Monday night, Raptors Pacers. Do not be afraid of the high number over under set at 246 and a half. I've told you, uh, made a killing this year on Pacer games in the over 246 and a half. Take the over word of wisdom here stay away from the Miami Heat for a few games. Um, the Heat, back on Friday night, they had the fight with the Pelicans. Lots of suspensions going on. Just avoid them for a day or two. In the meantime, check out everything else. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, I want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day, especially you everydayers out there. Meanwhile, if you don't mind, subscribe. It helps us, please, get you in the Big Ten Club. It's free. Just a little click, and you're good to go. Check it out, um, and you could uh, share and follow like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And once again, don't forget to check out our website, talkbigten.com, number 10. So did you see over the weekend? Former Kansas City Chiefs and former Washington Commanders offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy is going to be the UCLA Bruins' new associate head coach and offensive coordinator. The Bruins just named Deshaun Foster the head coach of their football team last week after Chip Kelly went on to become the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. Bieniemy, who for whatever reason has not been able to land a head coaching job in the NFL despite being very qualified, and a successful resume, of course, in tow. And look, he's excited to go back to school at the, in SoCal. He went to high school there, and he was the running backs coach at UCLA from 2003 to 2005 under Carl Durrell. And then he broke into the NFL with the Chargers. So he is he's used to Southern California. Uh, look, he's always mentioned as a potential head coach uh, in every coaching cycle of the NFL. And he's interviewed for numerous jobs over the years, but he's yet to land such a gig just this past season while he, after, you know, remember he left the chiefs and he was with commanders for a year as the OC. He interviewed with commanders for their head coaching job. Didn't get it. He interviewed for a couple other OC jobs in the NFL. Didn't get them. So in addition to play calling for the commanders this past season, He's worked with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and was the OC there for 2018 to 2022. That's very attractive to a lot of people. He's got that on his resume. Um, in my opinion here, we all know it's a shame that for whatever reason, he's not a head coach in the NFL. But having said that, I think his successful ties with Patrick Mahomes, I think it'd be a recruiting plus for UCLA when they go looking for young quarterbacks. So Anyway, congratulations to all of them for making that decision, and uh, they're good to go. Now, let me tell you about the Ohio Casino Control Commission. Sports gambling stuff. 
They granted an NCAA request that stops people in Ohio. You Buckeye fans, listen. Stops people in Ohio from making prop bets on individual athletes and their performances or stats while participating in an NCAA sporting event. NCAA President Charlie Baker says this will be a safeguard for the student athlete from mental duress, from the risks of sports betting, harassment, and abuse. His point is, hey, a player knows. I got I, the over-under on me is 21 points. I'm at 15 points here. The game's almost over. Oh, it's stressful. That's the thought process, I guess. Uh, I don't want to expose the kids to any uh, taunting or anything going on, or I don't know, people that uh, uh, might be having some action on some games. So anyway, throwing that out there, that is something the Ohio Casino Control Commission, the OCCC is what they are called. So I'll let you know about it. Um, Big Ten basketball. We've been talking up, at least I have been talking up Michigan State and Tom Izzo. Thought they were kind of getting things dialed in there for the month of March and March Madness until the Spartans weren't so hot anymore. Now, granted, it took a, a Dale Bonner three-pointer at the horn, but Ohio State went into East Lansing and beat Michigan State this weekend 60-57, to and suddenly the Spartans have dropped two in a row at home including last week's loss to Iowa. So, and, and kudos to the Buckeyes. You know, they've had a tough season. They've now won two out of three, including a win over first place Purdue. So that's firing head coach Chris Holman. So there's that. Meanwhile, I want to tell you about Iowa Hawkeyes guard, Caitlin Clark. We always talk about her, her here on this podcast. She continues to add to her amazing career stats. On Sunday, she recorded her 16th double-double. Uh, in a 101-85 victory over Illinois at Carver Hawkeye Arena, she had 24 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists. It was her fifth triple double of the season, and she was just one assist away from another triple double in their a loss on Thursday at Indiana. Also in this game, the Hawkeyes they had 17 three pointers and improved the record to 24 and four overall. They're tied for second in the Big Ten behind Ohio State. And in another cool note. Iowa had these uh, this logo made, uh, 22 Clark. Caitlin Clark wears 22, in case you don't know. Uh, they put the logo on the floor on the spot at Carver Hawkeye Arena where she drained her record-breaking three-pointer. We always say shot from the logo. Now there's another logo there marking where she shot that shot on February 15th to break the NCAA women's scoring mark. So that was pretty cool. By the way, she said she saw – she didn't see it till warm-ups. Uh, everybody told her about it, but she didn't see the logo on the floor. And she thought, wow, that's that's further back than I remembered it. It was back there, man. She launched it. By the way, uh, Clark now needs 51 points until she passes LSU's uh, Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete Maravich, uh, for the men's scoring mark, if you want to tally that as well. So she's just on an absolute roll. And these upper echelon teams in the Big Ten for women, uh, what, Ohio State, Indiana, Iowa, they all look like they're on some sort of collision course here in the upcoming Big Ten tournament, and they're all going to get into the NCAA tournament. They're all playing really some really good basketball right now. Hey, uh, I don't know if you've heard about it. If you've listened to this podcast, you have, but Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. And it's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe there, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And you may even catch this show on that channel from time to time. But check it out after we're done here. All right. We, um, we on Mondays, always like to have our Big Ten Top Ten observations, things that I observed. I rank them. 1 through 10, going to share them with you here in just a second. And we'll see if uh, any of mine make your list, too, from the top 10 observations over the weekend. It's all right here on Locked On Big Ten. All right, each and every uh, day we do a feature here in our final segment. If you're new to our Lockdown Big Ten program here on Mondays, we always like to do my top 10 Big Ten observations. Tuesdays is Tuesday tweets. Hit me up on Twitter at uh, Talk Big Ten. Maybe I'll find something amusing and add it to tomorrow's podcast. We look forward to that. 
Wednesday, we do our power rankings. Thursday is our Big Ten Network, Big Ten Classics, and live action going into the weekend. And then we make our picks and predictions of the weekend games on Friday's podcast. So you can check all that out. All right, I'm going to put this on screen, and I'm going to put a couple things on screen, and we'll uh, check this out uh, together. If you're on audio only, we'll um, we'll uh, describe it as best we can. Go full screen with it. Our top 10, our Big Ten top 10 over the weekend. Um, look, I threw a bone here to Indiana's Malik Renu. He's been playing really, really well, and Indiana has not been playing well, and I think they would be doomed without him. Now, they did lose to Penn State over the weekend, but Malik Renu threw in 27 points, so um, he's been playing well, and I thought uh, <clears throat> I'd give him a little run on, their, on our top 10, if you will. At number nine, this is great, Iowa basketball, Patrick McCaffrey, coach's son. At the end of the first half against Illinois, he threw about a 90-foot pass, baseball-style pass, from one end line to almost the other to Peyton Sanford for the layup at the end of the half. A lot of jokes on social media that that was the longest pass for Iowa all year, including their football team. Uh, yeah, I thought it was amusing. It was, but, <laughs> but it was good. It was good. Uh, so I put that in there at number nine. And number eight, speaking of Illinois, uh, they did win that game against Iowa. And I don't know if you know this or not, it was their 1,000th win in Big Ten play in 119 years. So congratulations to the Fighting Illini. I put them at number eight. And, of course, at number seven in that game, Coleman Hawkins. 30 points for the number 12 Fighting Illini in that game. They were down by seven. Came back to beat Iowa 95-85. And Illinois got their 20th win of the season. So congratulations to the fighting Illini there. Uh, Ohio State women at number six, getting a shout out from me. They beat Maryland 79-66, and they grabbed the share, at least a share of the Big Ten title and the number one seed of the conference tournament. So congratulations to the Lady Buckeyes for that over the weekend. At number four, a shout out to the Iowa women. You know, um, in their game over the the, uh, the weekend, they um, it was it was uh, it was against Illinois, right? Twenty eight assists, thirty six field goals, and they made seventeen three pointers in the game. Great team basketball. And so, number four, I, I talk about how uh, Iowa's Caitlin Clark likes to shoot from the logo. These logo threes. Well, like I told her, she's got her own logo now, so she's good to go. Um, so. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Number three, I put in here Michigan State, Cohen Carr. Finished a beautiful break pass down court and a dunk against Ohio State. Thought it was worth a mention. One of the cooler things I saw over the weekend. Uh, Zach Eady at number two, tied a career high, 35 points, along with 15 rebounds. The guy's a machine. They beat Michigan 84 to 76. And at number one, uh, Ohio State's Dale Bonner. Hitting the three at the buzzer from the left side in East Lansing for the win on the road against Michigan State. Pretty good. So there you have it, one through ten. My Big Ten top ten observations from the weekend. See if my list matches your list. Let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. And uh, all of our uh, comments uh, are always welcome. Again, Twitter at Talk Big Ten Number Ten. Comments on YouTube, and don't forget our website. Talk Big Ten, number 10.com. Always look forward to hearing from you guys. A lot of you hit me up over the weekend. Try to get back to some of you as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you don't mind uh, before you go and uh, click us on. It's free. And follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. And you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And when you're done, either go back and watch more Lockdown Big Ten, maybe something you missed last week. Always glad to have you there. You can find those on our website again at talkbig10number10.com, or you can go check out Lockdown Sports Today, our 24-7 streaming channel with all the Lockdown products coming your way. All right, more spring football previews, keeping our eye on everything going on in college basketball. It's the final week of February. That means March Madness, Big Ten Tournament right around the corner. Can't wait to get into all of that. It's all coming up. Thanks for checking us out. I'm Craig Scheman for Lockdown Big Ten.